Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are diving into replacing the head gasket and timing belt on the old gray goose here. So what we're going to do is we're going to clean up the surface here, get ready for a head gasket. We've got the new head, the new used head ready to roll, and we've got the old one out. So I've got the number one cylinder here at top dead center, and as you can see, it is flush with the surface of the block. And the reason why I have to replace the head is because when the timing belt goes bad, the valves are such minimal clearance between the head or the cylinder and the actual flat surface of the head that the valves come in contact with the piston. Let me show you what happened to this one. So you can see here that the exhaust valves are wide open on all four cylinders. This outside intake valve, again, is stuck on all four cylinders. Zero compression. So, therefore, the head is basically garbage. We've got a newer one out of a, another vehicle that we're getting ready to swap all the parts over, like the manifolds, and uh, get ready to set that down in place. So, let's get to it. So, we're just swapping over the exhaust manifold from the original head to the new head, and when I was tightening things down, I accidentally broke a stud using too many ugga duggas, I guess, on the old air wrench. So, um, I'm going to have to get the welder out and weld the nut on it and try and spin that out and see if it works. Let's try that. Nope. Okay. Didn't take and everybody on YouTube is now screaming at me for saying, you didn't clean the top of that stud so the weld would stick to it. And they'd be right. We'll try her again though. Just enough to get a hot, I think. Oh, and you're loosening it up in there? Yeah. There you go. Oh, there we go. Almost a quarter of a turn. Okay. Cooking with gas now. That's loose enough. That might spin out there with pliers now. All right, so we're still dealing with exhaust manifold stud issues. We're trying to get those to unseize. We've been coming over here and spraying them down a little bit in hopes that we can get those freed up. But in the meantime, I did get the uh, timing belt tensioner put into place, so that's in there. And if we come over to the car, we've got the block surface cleaned up and we've got the head gasket in place. So we pretty much are ready to drop the head on to the engine. Once we get those exhaust manifold studs fixed up and the manifold back on the vehicle, you see once we get that manifold on, then we'll be able to drop it right into place on top of the turbo. So that's where we are right now. So we'll come back at you when we're ready to drop that head on there. Okay, so we've got our exhaust manifold situation all fixed up. I found a bolt that was the same size. We used that. Everything switched over to that. And now we're ready to drop it on to the uh, block. Head gasket's in place. The gasket for the turbo uh, or exhaust manifold is there as well. So let's get to dropping her in. We 
put the headset down in place and we had a little bit of trouble with getting it in there so we thought because it's just sitting on the dowels right now but it's got a little bit of movement I'm not sure why that is we're gonna try and put those uh, head bolts down in there and see if it takes up the slack on that side hopefully everything works out okay so we've got the head in place and we've got all the bolts down just kind of snug so now we've got to torque them to 35 foot-pounds and then we're gonna go two rotations of a quarter turn or 180 degrees in total. So we're back at the garage on Sunday working on the Volkswagen and yes we are having mic issues one more time but I'm going to try and voice over this uh, to get you guys through these first couple of clips. We've got the valve cover back on top and we did put some oil in there just to help with those lifters being dry for so long. Uh, we've got the fuel injectors connected, we've got the uh, coils plugged in, uh, we've got to get them tightened up and we're getting ready to do the timing belt and get those marks lined up. So what I'm trying to explain here is the bottom sprocket on the crank for the timing belt has no marks on it, which means you've got to take the timing cover, install it because it does have the mark for top dead center, and then you've got to put the harmonic balancer on, which again has a mark on it and get those lined up so that you know exactly where the crank pulley is to be facing uh, once you go to put that timing belt on and then after the fact when you go to put the timing belt on you've got to take the harmonic balancer and the timing cover back off okay so after struggling with the uh, timing belt and getting the marks lined up and the tensioner and all this good stuff uh, we finally got it on there and we think we think, I think, we're doing okay. Timing belt's on, and uh, the marks are lined up up top. They're just slightly off down at the bottom, and I'm not sure what's going on because I can't seem to get the belt to work its way on there the proper way. But nevertheless, I think we're ready to test fire this thing and see if it's going to run. So uh, I think that's where we're at right now. So let's see if we can uh, maybe get this thing started. So before we start this thing up, I do anticipate there being some lifter noise because those lifters were dry. Uh, I did pour some oil down in there. I do expect to be a little bit of an exhaust leak on the EGR because I don't have that tube hooked up because, well, I just might have broke it when I took it off. And we've got no accessories on there either, so we know it's not going to be charging. We know the uh, water pump isn't going to be turning. But nonetheless, we should be able to uh, crank it up at least here it run hopefully it runs pretty good so I'm gonna hook up the uh, battery and possibly the booster pack because I think the battery is weak and uh, we'll get her turned over here we go She didn't start. I also might reach in there and just crank it over for a second or two. Let's see what's going on. Okay, that's good. Hmm. Now we got to figure out what's going on with the no start. It does sound like it's got compression, which is a good thing. I do feel like it's possibly in time maybe it's 180 out I don't know so one thing I did find that wasn't un, or that wasn't plugged in was the uh, the mass airflow so that may be enough to cause it not to start we're gonna try her again nope that don't seem to be it freaking Volkswagens it could be not starting because the hoods up for Pete's sake who knows <laughs> well I don't know where we go from here uh, we've tried plugging everything in that uh, we felt needed to be plugged in I know that sometimes Volkswagens are quite proprietary when it comes to having certain things plugged in uh, we even went so much as to uh, plug the headlights in I don't know uh, we got the mass airflow we've got the coolant reservoir plugged in everything that I can see is plugged in that I unplugged there wasn't very many electrical plugins to uh, to do so I got that done but 
we're at a standstill and I really don't know where to go. If you guys know of anything, if you've dealt with these Volkswagens, these B5s or 5.5s and know anything about them, um, let me know in the comment section down below and we'll see if we can't uh, figure out what's going on. This video is going to go up on Tuesday. Uh, tomorrow is Monday and I'll get uh, my mechanic Tim to take a look at it and see if we uh, have overlooked anything. Other than that, I don't know where to go. Um, it is turning over. There's no noises. It does sound like it's got compression. But other than that, I don't know what's going on. But that's going to do it for this video for now. We'll come back and we'll do an update uh, in a following video once we get this thing up and running and back together and on the road. Well, here we are at the end of another video with a slight sense of defeat on this Volkswagen. And uh, just to reiterate, I did check the fuel pump relay and everything is good there as far as the fuse and, and all that stuff so um, we'll figure out where we're gonna go from here I'm sure that tomorrow once my mechanic comes in he can kind of help troubleshoot this with me but at the end of the day here we are we're back at the camper and well everything's in disarray my deck is on our trailer over here I feel like we're living in a renovation at the end of the season here we're getting ready to move to another lot um, that's a little bit nicer it's a little bit shadier and a little bit more ground space so we're gonna have a little bit of a lawn next year this is just something else we've been working away at here down at the camper trying to get ready for the next camping season anyways that's going to conclude it for this video don't forget Thursday evenings is the car guy and six fan show with my partner in crime Grant Tommy who is straight six fan I'll leave his link right here Tune in on Thursday evenings at 7 o'clock Central, 8 Eastern, and 9 local time because, well, we're a car show talking about cars. Just a couple of guys with some uh, buddies in the chat that uh, have a lot of fun. So it's only a half hour, 35 minute show. Hope you can join us every week. It alternates back and forth between my channel and Grant's. So having said all that, stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. I love you guys. God bless. Let's do it again real soon.